Okay, let's just have a little uh, review before we move on to the global harmonization system. By this point, these placards should start to look familiar to you, and I would hope by the end of the class um, you would be able to identify each one of those just immediately. For example, there's only one blue placard. There's only one placard that has the red and uh, yellow together with it. We have only one placard that looks like an um, amusement tent. And so um, this is a part of your goal as a um, safety and health student. So the second identification system we're going to learn is the global harmonization system. It's one that I'm sure you're quite familiar with. However, it does differ um, from the um, Department of Transportation. Anything you need to know is available in this document here, Global Harmonization System of Classification and Labeling of Chemicals. And that right there tells you what the whole purpose is of the Global Harmonization System. It has to do with communication, classification, and uh, labeling. So this link is up on the website for you. So our objectives or our goals um, for this particular learning unit is for you to understand the purpose and scope of the um, hazardous communication standard, as well as um, begin to understand the global harmonization system. It's actually quite complicated and um, detailed really well in the document that is on the web for you. Um, we call it the purple book. And then also start to identify the requirements because um, the global harmonization system really looks at um, the container as well as the information that's provided to the worker where the Department of Transportation looks at um, vehicles that are in transit. And later when we learn the um, National Fire Protection um, Agency, when we learn that one, that's actually stationary um, storage tanks. So each, there's so many different elements with hazardous materials. That's the easiest way to put it. So um, we're going back now to the Department of Labor because we're away from the Department of Transportation. And that'll be uh, Title 29. And Subpart Z gives us our toxic and hazardous substance list. And where we find the hazardous communication standard is 29 CFR 1910 1200. That's where we find our hazard communication standard. But it's listed within subpart Z. Everything you need to know about the hazard communication standard and the global harmonization system could be found on the OSHA website. Um, it discusses safety data sheets, labeling, what the pictograms look like, interpretations of the rules. So one of your homework assignments is to find two safety data sheets and compare them to the rules and to make sure or to evaluate whether the safety data sheets that you found actually um, complied to the rules or not and then come up with maybe an idea of how to make the safety data sheets easier to understand and you can find that information, some information here for you as well as in the um, purple book. So this part, this example lists all the different sections that should be on any of your safety data sheets. And we actually have 16 different sections. So the hazardous communication standard found on 29 CFR 1910-1200, it has four goals, purposes. The first one is to reduce um, injuries and illness related to chemical exposures, right? Um, do no harm. The second one is to evaluate hazardous chemical usage and storage inside a facility. 
So you, here you could see how uh, like things are stored together. Maybe there's um, an overpack on the bottom of it or some kind of containment system. So reduce um, injuries and illnesses, evaluate the chemicals that we have in our um, workplaces, communicate information to employees and contractors about what's being brought into their workplace, and then reduce the quantities of hazardous uh, waste. Um, and those are the four goals. Uh, reduce, evaluate, communicate, and reduce. We're trying to get rid of the amount of hazardous wastes in the environment. No more super fun sites. So the scope covers, or so the scope, the scope of the global harmonization system. Here we go. This document by um, um, the Department of Labor. So it covers all hazardous chemicals, um, solutions, and um, dilute solutions. Um, it does not cover, cover pharmaceuticals, food additives, cosmetics, pesticides from the point of intake. So it doesn't cover them when I'm putting the, the, the food additive on my face, right? When I'm putting the cosmetic on my face. But when I'm making the cosmetic, then of course the occupational safety and health rules would apply. Okay, I felt that this part was important enough to put it on paper and just kind of read it to you at least briefly. So, this Occupational Safety and Health Standard is intended to address comprehensively the issue of classifying the potential hazards of chemicals and communicating information concerning hazards and appropriate protective measures to employees. This section requires chemical manufacturers or importers to classify the hazards of chemicals which they produce, import, and that all employers to provide and all employers provide information to their employees about the hazardous chemicals to which they are exposed by means of a hazard communication program, labels and other forms of warning, safety data sheets, and information concerning training. Remember this has to be a written program. Um, employers shall ensure that labels on incoming containers are not defaced or removed and employers shall maintain copies of all safety data sheets that are received. Um, OSHA breaks things down into three categories. Health codes, environmental hazard codes, and physical codes. And so the codes help classify part of this big classification system. Um, so our health codes, we have uh, health hazard, carcinogen, um, respiratory sensitizer, as well as the other health code would be acute toxicity, skull and crossbones. Environmental hazards, we have our aquatic toxicity. And then um, um, compressed gas cylinder is, um, you know, all the gases together, whether it's compressed gas, liquefied gas, dissolved gas. Um, then we have our oxidizers, uh, um, flames over the zero and this was on the pretest. And then we have all flammable liquids and gases are in one category, as well as self-reactives and pyrophorics. And then this is a little bit different because the exploding bomb over here, we have our explosives, we have our self-reactives too as well, and our organic peroxides. The difference is this self-reactive will react into a fire versus this one will explode. explode. And then we have our corrosives, which is the same for DOT. Everybody uses the same for corrosives. And then an exclamation point, which marks our um, sensitizers. So the classification codes, you have um, health code three, um, environmental codes are four, and physical codes are two. And so I'll show you what those um, look like in the global harmonization system. So I'm in the global harmonization system book, and I just chose flammable gases because it's 
pretty straightforward. So you could see that um, OSHA has categorized flammable gases, pyrophoric gases, chemically unstable gases in two different categories, A and B, and then flammable gases again, category 1A, 1B, and 2. And these are based on um, different types of properties. And so the, this category is important because when we scroll down a little bit, hopefully it won't make you too sick. There we go. You could see that for category 1A, right, a pyrophoric gas, um, the symbol is a flame, the danger word, the signal word is danger, and then this is the important part, the hazard statement is extremely flammable gas. Where ex if you had a category 2, then it would be a warning and it would say flammable gas. Now if you had a category A, you can see here A, extremely flammable gas may react may react explosively even in the absence of air. And so um, th this is the way the category system um, for physical hazards, uh, health hazards, and environmental hazards, this is how it's one system so that everybody's using the same descriptors. So we want to make sure we say flammable gas and not combustible gas. And that way we're all using the same words and hopefully it'll reduce the chance of errors and therefore um, injuries. So I really um, <laughs> think that you should scroll through here so that you could see the different categories and it'll, it'll make so much more sense to you if you look through this document on your own. So keep in mind that there are three different classification criteria. H codes for physical hazards, we have H codes for environmental hazards, and we have H codes for health hazards. And they're found within the um, Global Harmonization System documentation. So you do have an assignment where you're going to pick up some safety data sheets and can compare them to the different sections. I already went through that and this is just kind of a brief of the 16 sections that are required within um, a safety data sheet. From casual observation of a simple wood fire, it seems that the wood itself is burning. Actually, only the vapors given off by the logs supply the fuel that feeds the flames. This action can be readily seen in a simple laboratory experiment. A small quantity of wood shavings placed in a flask are heated by a Bunsen burner. The vapors rising from the heated wood can be ignited at the mouth of the flask. This is true of nearly all combustible materials, whether in a liquid or solid state. Here, soft coal is burned in the same manner. Even paper, which is not ordinarily regarded as vapor producing, when heated, gives off vapors which can be burned at some distance from the paper itself. So the safety data sheet gives us all the information and then we take it we make it smaller and we put it on a label and so there's specific information that you need to um, put on a label as well. And so as you can see here you have the proper name, the proper chemical name, um, whether there is a um, signal word so that would be danger or warning, danger is more severe, warning is less severe, um, the hazard statement and your hazard statement comes again, oh, not from there, but from here, right, from the um, global harmonization system, where first it puts it in categories, and then it gives you the um, um, statements. So again, after the chemical is put into a category, 
then you'll have the symbol that should be on the um, label you'll have the signal word and the hazard statement depending on whether it's a category one or a category two and each one of these oops sorry each one of these actually has a logic tree and that'll be easier there you go so that the logic tree is used to ensure that the agent is classified appropriately now you're just going to probably be looking at your safety data sheets but I think it's really important to know where they came from and um, what the risk could be if you use an old safety data sheet that isn't conforming to the um, newer standards.